This episode is sponsored by Indie Rebel, a masterclass in independent filmmaking. When I was starting out in filmmaking, two books inspired me to no end. Rebel Without a Crew and the DV Rebels Guide. I wanted to write a book that would inspire the next generation of indie filmmakers. The kind of book that I would want to read again and again to guide me through things. Cold from over a decade of experience, Indie Rebel walks you through the process of making your first movie step by step. You'll learn how to develop a story, write a script that you can shoot, how to pick out and use a camera, tricks for lighting and camera movement, different methods for getting good sound, short film ideas for learning how to make movies, how to run a set and direct actors, and of course post-production and distribution on the internet. If you've dreamt of making your own movie, Indie Rebel and Masterclass in Independent Filmmaking is a must read. Get your copy today, link in the description. All right, well, let's get started with the overview of the Fusion interface. So here on my main timeline, we can see that I've got a clip in the shot, and I only want to use maybe a certain section of it here. So I want, when she's starting to look up, so I'm going to go ahead and put a break right there. And this is not a tutorial on editings, and I've got special keyboard shortcuts that mimic Avid. So don't worry about trying to copy anything I'm doing here. I'm literally just, you know, getting a, a shot that's five seconds long. Perfect. So the first thing we're going to want to do is put our cursor, the CTI, over the clip, and then click on the button down here. This is Fusion. And now we are here inside of the Fusion interface. Pretty cool, right? Now, like I've mentioned before, this was a third-party standalone program that used to be used in Hollywood quite a bit uh, on many movies that I guarantee that you've seen. And Blackmagic Design bought it up and literally integrated it here inside of Resolve, which is really, really cool and quite the accomplishment. So first off, let's go ahead and give you a little overview of this interface. And then I'm going to explain to you how the software works um, and just show you some of the tools and stuff like that. Enough that you can kind of get off and start playing. And then we'll have other videos in this course uh, showing you specific effects that we talk about in the book. So the first thing you'll notice is that we have two viewers up here. And I know this one doesn't have anything in it. You can't really tell there's a viewer here, but I'm going to go ahead and just throw something up there. Now you can see we've got two viewers. Viewers let you view different parts of your compositing process, which takes place down here in the node graph or flow chart. And that's literally how nodes work is we're going to be building a flow chart um, and a, a mind map almost, if you will, of what the shot needs to be. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Separating the viewers and the node graph, we have some very common tools that you might find yourself using. And they're broken up into sections. So we've got generators here, where we can generate a background, fast noise, text, or paint. We've got some correctors. So you've got a color corrector, curves, hue curves, brightness contrast, and blur. Okay, these are all very common, used a lot. Then we've got more of the uh, transforming and, and compositing tools. So you've got your merge node, which we're going to use a whole lot. Uh, channel booleans is used for playing with alpha channels and moving channels around uh, from one area to another. And then mat control also used for like the green screen mats and stuff. Resize, which I honestly never really use because we have the transform node, which I use quite a bit. Then you've got some roto tools, different roto shapes and things that you can do. And we'll talk about those in a minute. And then you get your more advanced stuff down here. You've got some particles. Okay, these three are for particle generation. And then you've got 3D as well. So Fusion does have true 3D compositing. Unlike After Effects, which was 2.5D in Fusion and also Nuke, it's actually real 3D. And you can do some really cool stuff with that. But that's definitely at the advanced end. And we probably won't be getting into that uh, in this course. And then over here on the side, we have our inspector panel, and this is where we're going to change the properties of uh, things that we do down here in the node graph. Uh, then, of course, up at the top, we've got some other things we can turn on. Uh, keyframes, okay, that brings up the keyframe panel. We'll be using this a little bit later when we talk about keyframing. And then uh, you also have a spline editor as well, which is used to smooth out keyframes and stuff. So, uh, let's talk about this node graph for a second down here. I've got two nodes. This is a node right here, and this is a node right here. And if I look at it, this one says media in. So this media in node is taking 
this shot from the timeline and bringing it here inside of Fusion. So that's its sole job. You can also bring in uh, media without a media in node. For instance, if I go up here to my media pool and I enable that and I bring in uh, like this metal bullet hit, that also creates a media in node, but this one is not tied to anything over here in the timeline because I brought it down here inside of Fusion. But we can you know, bring footage in this way and I can throw it up here and we can uh, see it. Now, how did I do that? How did I get it up here into viewer one? And I also have my second viewer here. Well, if you look, there are two dots down here at the bottom of the nodes and every node has the same two dots, even the media out node over here. And the dot corresponds to a viewer. So the first dot would be viewer one, and we can see that's what's happening. I'm viewing this up here in this viewer. And likewise, my media out node has the second dot selected. So I'm viewing that over here in my second viewer. To select which viewer you wanna view a node in, you can select the node and press one or two on the keyboard. So if I come up here and I select this and I press one, it throws it up here into viewer one. If I come down to my bullet hole and I press two, it sends it over to viewer two. So real easy. The other way you can do it is actually by dragging and dropping into the viewer. And a lot of old school fusion guys, you'll see do this a lot if you watch their tutorials. Uh, media out node, what's this media out node do? Well, the media out node sends whatever is coming into it back to the timeline. So if I go back to the timeline right now, I'm only gonna see the green screen shot. If I come back in, and I view my bullet hole, and we'll talk about the bullet hole, or how to um, uh, pipe things around here in just a second, but we can see now that the media out node is connected to the bullet. And if I go back to the timeline, now I only see the bullet hole. I don't see the, the girl on the green screen anymore. So uh, uh, likewise, let's just show you this. If I have nothing connected to the media out node, then there's nothing to come back to the timeline. And if I delete the media out node, okay, same thing. There's nothing there. And you might find yourself in that situation where you're doing a really complex composite. I'm just gonna move really quickly here for just a moment. And we say, yep, that's my shot. That's what I want. I've got the bullet hole right here off to the side. And I go back to my main shot and it's gone. Well, that's because there's no media out node. So we need to come in after the very last node in the sequence. And I can type shift space and then type media and media out, and then now I have a media out node, and it doesn't matter that I'm viewing it. You can see I'm not viewing the media out node, but because it is connected to the chain, that does get output right back here to the main timeline, and then I can go about and keep working. So uh, let me go ahead and clear that, and we'll clear that back here to normal. So what, what did I just do when I put the, um, the bullet hole on top? Well, that was a composite. So let's bring it back down. And you can see that it just ends up out here in space. There's nothing connected to it. These little squares on each node are outputs. So I can output things from one node to another. And these triangles are inputs. So I can go from the output of this one to the input of this one. And that brings the bullet hole up into my viewer two because I'm viewing the media one or the media out through viewer two. Now, that can get a bit complex and confusing sometimes. There are times where it is nice to have multiple viewers, but most of the time I, I just like having one. And here's how you can do that. If you come up here to the top of your viewers, you'll see a square and it says viewer. If I just click that square, I got rid of viewer two and I'm only working with one. So now whenever I want to view something, I just press one on the keyboard. One, one, one. That's all I have to do to do my, my viewing and view stuff throughout the shot. Super easy, super cool. If I double click a node and select it, you can see that our properties in the inspector changes as well to be that node. And that's gonna give me all the uh, details I need to change and affect the, the nodes that I'm working with. So let me go and disconnect that. Now, if I want to put the bullet hole on top of the shot, uh, I can do that with a merge node. So if I click right here and we add a merge, the merge node lets you stack things on top of each other. And you'll notice when you hover your mouse over the two arrows, we have a background and we have a foreground. So if I run the background into the main footage, 
I'm going to line that up. And then the foreground onto the bullet hole. And then I view the merge by pressing one on the keyboard. We can see that now the bullet hole is on top of our background plate. Pretty cool. And then again, remember, we want to connect this to that media out node. So that way I can come back to my main timeline and I have my final shot. Okay. Now, this is simple. This is you know pretty easy. But here's the crazy thing about nodes. It doesn't matter where... I put this in the shot. It doesn't change the final output. I can connect these things however I want like that. As long as they go into the right inputs and outputs, that's all that matters with the shot because we're just dealing with the signal flow. It doesn't matter where it's placed on the screen. Now I do find it helpful to have a, a system in place. I like to merge things in from the top on top of my background and then I want a solid background pipe going all the way through. Now, maybe I don't want the bullet hole right here. Maybe I want to put it over here off to the side. Well, if I click my merge node, I can see this transform widget appears and I can actually move it around that way. The only thing I don't like about doing that is I can't look at my shot and tell by looking at it that there's a transform node applied or that there's a transformation applied and, and sticking it right there. So what I like to do is I like to add a transform node. So let me go ahead and undo that. I'm going to select my uh, bullet hole and I'm going to now add a transform node that's this one right here so now with the transform node you can see I've got the same widgets as before and I can still move it over here but now when I'm just looking at the shot I can tell oh there's a transformation applied to the bullet hole because I can follow the bullet hole bullet hole transformation merged on top bullet hole transformed over to the side here merged on top so the transform nodes lets you move things around the shot. I can move it over to here. I can scale it up and down using the size controls in my inspector. So I can make it smaller, larger. Okay, you can do all sorts of stuff like that. I'm going to stick it back over to here for now. And uh, that's important to be able to have. Now let's say I wanted to color correct the green screen background. So I can come over here and I can click on the green screen. I'm going to add a color corrector. Okay, and now using my tools, I can color correct it. And you can see the green screen goes into the color corrector, which then goes into the merge. And that's why as I move my color corrector, I'm only correcting the background shot. You can see that the bullet has not been affected by that at all. If I delete that and I select my merge and add a color corrector after the merge, now when I go through and do my color correction, oh, we gotta view it, right? There we are. You can see that it color corrects everything. Now, just for fun, we can also blur parts of the shot. So maybe I only want to blur the background. So if I put my blur before that merge node and I go and I blur, the background blurs, but the bullet does not. They get composited together and then they all get color corrected at once. So this is how nodes work. This is the flow chart that we're building. Now, if you came from a layer-based compositor, you know, what would you have? Well, you'd have your background shot, you'd have the stuff you're adding on top, and each one of the shots would have effects applied to it. And then when you want to do your color correction to everything, you either have to pre-compose the shot or add an adjustment layer. But with nodes, we don't need adjustment layers and we don't need to pre-compose anything. The merge nodes handles all that for us, and that's kind of cool and actually really, really, really powerful. Uh, a couple other things I want to show you. I'm going to get rid of my blur. I'm going to get rid of the color corrector. Actually, let's put the color corrector back. I'm going to go Control Z to bring that back. Okay, and I want to make sure I'm viewing it. I want to show you guys how you can mask off certain things. You can actually mask off effects in this, which is really cool. So I'm going to add a ellipse, a circular ellipse. I'm going to put it over the girl's head. And using the controls, I'm just going to... Scale this down to fit pretty much right over her head like that, okay? Now, if I run the ellipse into this blue triangle on the color corrector, which you can see says effect mask, watch this. I'm going to run it in, and now the color correction is only within my ellipse. If I move it over to here, okay, you can see that part's color corrected, that part is, and that part is. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we also can soften the edges. 
and blur that out a little bit. And you can see you can end up with some really interesting effects by isolating them to certain parts of the image. So that's kind of neat. What else can we do that? Well, if I take that same effect mask and I run it into a merge node, watch this. Okay, in fact, let's just view the merge so we're only looking at that. And then I'm going to take my mask and I'm gonna pull that edge softening back down so you can see better. Now what it's doing is it's affecting the merge node itself. I'm only showing through this foreground wherever the mask is selected, okay? Likewise, I can also invert it. If I hit invert, it does it has the opposite effect. And you can see how that works. It's almost like magic. It's kind of cool looking. And you'll need to play with that to really wrap your mind around how that part of it works. So that's a pretty cool and a handy feature to, to know about too. All right, so we've talked about uh, how nodes work. We've talked about how to merge things on top of each other. We've talked about masking off effects using uh, the roto tools or the masking tools. Okay, this one was an ellipse, but I can delete that. I could bring in a square instead. We'll hook that up. Okay, you can see it's doing the same thing now, or I can invert it. Okay, same effects as before. It's only bringing it in wherever that mask is. Just like before, I can soften it, right? Another one that you'll find yourself using a lot is um, the polygon mask, and that's this one right here. So if I bring in a polygon mask, I'm gonna run this one back into the color corrector this time. What I can do now is uh, I can click and drag, or just click around and create points. If I click and drag, I can actually smooth the points out. Okay, so you can create really intricate looking masks. And then you can see how the icon changes to the loop right there, it lets me close it. And now if I view that color corrector, that color correction is only within the mask that I drew by hand. <coughs> and I can select the mask and I can move these points around and really make sure that I'm dialing this into exactly what I want, which is kind of cool. And so we're just playing with the the roundness and the shapes and all that. And again, we can soften the edges, blur it in and out, and you can end up with something like that. So that is the basics of Fusion and the Fusion interface and nodes and how they all work. And you can see I did most of this just by using the built-in nodes up here, right? You're especially gonna use from uh, the Roto tools over to the left, you're gonna use these like all the time. If you find that there's a node that you can't find up here and there's something that you may want to do, a couple ways you can pull it up. I can either hit control space bar and uh, that brings up a list of all the nodes, all the different effects that I have available to play with. Okay. And I can search for them down here too. So if there's a keyer that I want to do a green screen key, I could type in key. And now I can see that I've got a chroma keyer, a delta keyer, a difference keyer, a luma keyer another luma keyer, an ultra keyer. So all my keying options are right there. Another way you can find this stuff, let's go and cancel out of here, is by right clicking in the node graph and go to add tool. And this is cool because now we can see categories. And if I go into my mat categories, I can find all my keyers again. Okay, there they are. Magic mask, mat control, ultra keyer, all that good stuff is right there. And I can add those into the shot there. If I go up to filter, I can see some filters I've got, some eroding, uh, there's film emulation if you have third-party add-ons like I do, or you've got your built-in film effects, adding grain and things like that. Um, so being able to just right-click, add tool, and browse through stuff is handy. Now you can also come over here up to the top left and click effects, and that will hide my media pool momentarily and bring up all the effects as well. And I can view the tools by category. I can see what open effects I have. Open effects are effects that you, are third party installs that work with a lot of other software. And I can scroll through and just build and play. So I would challenge you guys before you move on, before you go to the, the, the next video in the series, just start playing with this. Start experimenting with nodes. You're not gonna break anything in here, everything you can undo. And you know, bring in a piece of footage and you know, add some effects to it. You know, how does the blur control work? You know, how, what can I do with that? Um, start figuring out how merges work and how to organize your, your node graph. You can see I like bringing my masks from the bottom and I like adding new stuff from the top. Uh, it just, I find that works a lot better for me. 
So uh, oh, I'm using the middle mouse wheel here to scroll in and out. So that lets me navigate the node graph. If I press and hold the mouse button, the middle mouse button, I can pan this side to side and up and down and you know whatever I need to do. So if I'm like working down here, I can use that middle mouse button and now I can start working on the other parts down at this end. And again, don't forget your media out node, very, very important because that sends it back to the timeline. And you can see how quickly that updated. It's like instantaneous real-time feedback, which is super cool. So that wraps up this video, your introduction to the Fusion interface. And uh, come on back for the next one where we're going to talk about green screens.